All right, so I look this way, Brian. We live? <laughs> we are live. <laughs> All right, we live. It's buff time. <laughs> Baby, it's buff time with Brian and Big Dog right here on both of our channels, Broadcast Live, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Find us on it. And uh, we're going to go like that, man. We're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Big Dog Chico. Uh, I'm going to be, I guess, representing the prime side. You know, a longtime <laughs> prime fan, following him over from uh, Jackson State, of course, during his whole football career. But, um, his coaching career, Jackson State, and now over um, to Colorado, University of Colorado, and uh, doing his thing in his second season there. And um, we're collabor collaborating with my guy, Brian, now. Brian, let us know and let everybody out there listening know uh, what you do in your background. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Brian Howell, I've been covering the Buffs for, uh, this will be my 15th season uh, covering them for the Boulder Daily Camera, which is the local newspaper in Boulder. Um, our website uh, for Buffs coverage is buffzone.com. And um, so you mentioned you covered, you're sort of coming from the prime side. I'm coming from the the mainstream journalist side, I guess. And, uh, um, you know, the, I guess I would represent, you and I were talking beforehand about, uh, there's since day one, there's sort of been this, there's prime fans and there's CU fans, I guess. And, um, you, you know, I think that that, that divide is maybe closing a little bit, you know, um, over time. Yeah. But um, I think that you, you and I are kind of joking that you sort of represent those prime fans. I represent maybe those, those CU fans that have been with it for a long time, but you know, our kind of, our point here is kind of like, let's prove that you know, we can come together. We can just chat and have a good conversation and uh, maybe help, uh, you know, the two different sides get the point of view or the other side, you know, to where, um, right. cause the, the bottom line is I, I used to say this all the time last year, you know, when you'd see like the two sides, maybe bicker at each other. It's like, people got to understand everybody wants the same thing. And that's for the Buffaloes to be successful because that means right. coach prime successful, Shador successful, Shiloh, Travis, all those guys are successful and that's what everybody wants. And so, um, you know, we just kind of come at it from different points of view because we've got different points of view, right? Um, you know, me right. covering this program for a long time, uh, you know, maybe the prime fans uh, have not, known about Colorado until about 15 months ago, you know, and so, yeah. you know, maybe educating each other on both those sides. So it's kind of fun to, you know, to collaborate with you. I've collaborated with Neely a little bit. Um, so it'll be fun to, uh, you know, collaborate with you as well. Yes, indeed. I appreciate you doing it, taking time out to do that. I know you're busy, man, covering it and uh, mainstreaming it, um, football and women's sports also. And, um, we're gonna go get into some other things that a lot of people out there probably know about. Well, we know is, is it Brian this guy or is it Big Dog this guy? Yeah, we are. We're gonna talk about different things, but uh, main thing is like we said, we're looking for the success of the Colorado Buffaloes and Coach Prime at the end of the day. And right now they're in uh, spring practice. I think we have nine mm -hmm. more practices to go, yep. including the spring game starting tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. Uh, they're gonna be picking up, I think, practice numbers whatever practice number it is yeah tomorrow's um, number seven number seven yeah they're going to be yep. picking this up tomorrow and uh we've seen a lot of up to this point a lot of guys standing out and a lot of people see talked about michael welch making plays the freshman running back back there of course shador sanders looking on point shiloh sanders uh still hitting everything that moves making tackles <laughs> uh wide receivers stepping up marion miller defensive line looking like they have a whole new fire up under them, and the offensive line gelling together, protecting Shador Sanders. Who are some guys we should be talking about and who have stood out to you thus far? Yeah, you know, I, I think number one you mentioned was is Michael Welch. He's sort of been uh, the talk a little bit so far of spring ball, and, um, you know, we don't get to watch it. And so um, all of us Buff fans are kind of uh, watching spring ball the same way. And uh, we got yeah. Bucky and Darius to thank and, and Neely as well through uh, their videos. We're kind of all watching through well off and, and reach the people, things like that. But um, clearly, you know, Michael Welch is uh, turning some heads. And um, he's a guy that, you know, I know their, their high school recruiting class is small, uh, but um, I think he was the lowest rated uh, recruit um, until they've had a couple corners the last couple of weeks that are um, sort of, you know, off the radar a little bit, but Micah uh, was that lowest rated guy, but um, he was maybe my favorite member of the class. Cause I'm always, I've always been a running back guy since I was a kid, yeah. you know, Tony Dorsett, you know, George Rogers, uh, you know, guys like that. I loved running backs. And uh, Micah Welch was a guy when I watched his film, I was like, Ooh, okay. This kid, this kid's pretty good. Um, and, and you get him in the spring ball and uh, actually met him last week at Xavier Weaver's, uh, you know, pro day, got a chance to say hi to him and shake his hand. And, you know, he is, he's, he's a shorter guy, 
but he is a rock, you know, and you see that the way he's running the ball. And, um, you know, there was that, that play the other day where, um, he kind of, you know, bowled over Shiloh Sanders and, uh, kind of backpedaled in the end zone while, while pointing at Shiloh, you know, and, you yeah. know, and it was, it's one of those plays that, uh, you know, Shiloh, uh, won't forget that one, but, um, but fans would love to see, and Shiloh would love to see that type of thing in the fall on Saturdays because, uh, you know, I think Michael Welch is going to be a key player on this team. Wow. And yeah, five, like five foot nine, 205 pounds. Yeah. Baldwin, mm-hmm. Georgia, down there where they play a lot of good football at. They say he's special. He's been special for a long time. Low to the ground running, like Coach Prime said, he loves uh, out of the backfield and in, in, uh, in that mode of kind of like Emmitt Smith, who he won yep. the Super Bowl with. So, uh, and then Coach Flea was heading up one of the guys uh, recruiting him. So, brought him in. I just see, I, I know he's an electrified runner. I know he demands to have the football. But you got three upperclassmen stud in front of him now. Will he be able to, you know, break that uh, playing field, get in, uh, in, break, I guess, break that depth chart of that? those three to get on the field to play or would it be better for the team in Colorado and the staff to have a guy like that red shirt a year, you know, maybe play three, four games, but ultimately red shirt because you feel like he's so good and you don't want to just lose a year because you know, you have three guys in front of him. So what would he get uh, at, at the max? What maybe, you know, 20 carries on the season, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's interesting to see how that's going to work out because um, there was so much talk about how good the running back group was last year. And then that running game just never got on track. And, um, yeah. you know, Alton McCaskill was the guy that they brought in a year ago to be the guy. And he just was never healthy. We all saw. And, you know, there was that, that kind of famous clip on well off uh, where, you know, Dion pulls him aside, you know, coach prime pulls him aside on practice and says, says, look, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see the movie, not the commercial here, you know, and yeah, not the commercial, not the trailer. Yeah. Well, well, the, the movie's been in production for about a year now and maybe a year longer than Alton has wanted. Um, and so uh, he's a guy that we're all looking at and saying, okay, that's the guy. And then, you know, Savion Wilkerson, um, I love his game as well. And I mean, he was a thousand yard back at Jackson state, uh, two years mm-hmm. ago. Um, I thought they should have run him more last year. I really liked how he ran when he got chances. And then of course yeah. there's Dylan Edwards who, you know, was a fantastic freshman last year, but, um, is, I think he's better He's going to be better than he was last year, but he's still, to me, that that kind of third down. Not that he can only do third down, but he's that 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 prototype third down guy where you you get him out of the backfield a little bit, throw him some passes. Mm-hmm. We saw him catch a pass out of the backfield, a deep pass uh, from Shador the other day um, that was really nice. That's the type of thing I see from him, and maybe that change of pace back. But um, I think Welch can get in there. I mean, we never saw one guy take hold of it last year um, under Coach Flea. But two years ago, Savion did. And so it's hard to know what yeah. does Coach Flea really want to do. Um, yeah. But to me, if Micah Welch keeps making plays like that, you play him. You know, <laughs> if he if he's the best or if he's one of the two best guys running the football, forget the red shirt. You got to play him and, and, and run the football. Yeah, it's going to be a tough call for Coach Flea and Coach Prime and Coach Pat Sherman, who we saw in the video produced today, that he wants to – have that running game established because mm-hmm. that's going to showcase Shador Sanders even more. If you can have a running game going that yep. the team has the respect, oh, Shador can really get off now. And he has the wide receivers to do it. So, yeah. you know, the running game is going to be key this year. Pat Sherman, who had, uh, even on the video show, that he had Saquon Barkley as a, as a rookie. He, had, he coached Michael Vick, um, uh, Donovan McNabb. Uh, Case Keenan when they went 13 and three in, in Minnesota, also Sam Bradford in St. Louis. So he he's had some guys, but also had to go through that transition phase with Eli Manning and Daniel Jones and and no quarterback in Cleveland. So he's had the rough times, but he feels young and rejuvenated here uh, there in Colorado. So if he can, you know, establish that run game, no matter who who it is, but it has to get going one way or the other. I think um, for starters, though, I think. First game of the season, I think we'll see Dylan Edwards out there with the first group. Although I've been yeah. saying Alton McCaskill this whole time, um, I just think from the way that the mindset of the offense will be, I think Dylan will be first. 
Alton will be that guy will be like um clock killing Corey Dillon back in the day. Remember Corey Dillon? Oh yeah. Yeah. When they uh-huh. when they get yeah, they give him the ball late in the game, give it to Savion and uh Alto, but then Michael Welch is in that same mold too. So if either one of those guys have injury problems, Michael Welch is there and if he messes around to get it, he might not let it go. So <laughs> well, that's something that- <laughs> and running back's an interesting spot too, because you know they, we talk about starters, and technically, if you play the first play, you're the starter, right? <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, I right, agree right, with right, but... you know I, I agree with you there that Dylan Edwards, I that first play, I think you probably come out with Dylan Edwards because um, he's that weapon that everybody remembers from TCU yeah, last year, and you remember the the electric plays he made at Utah even, um, and so yeah. he's a scarier guy right off the bat, and so uh, but I, I I would bet like that first game, Dylan Edwards is the quote starter, but Alton has the most carries that day. That's what yeah, I would that, guess. That, I like that. I like that right there. And I'll, but I would see Dylan is so dynamic that you can have him in the backfield with Shadur, see what the defense is doing, and then send him out there in the slot. Now, now you got an empty yeah. backfield with Dylan Edwards in the slot, and now the defense has to kind of show their hand now. Is it man? Is it zone still? Should Dua Sanders now have a clear picture? It helps the offensive line now because they can clearly see who's the blitzer and get rid of the ball faster. So I think, you know, bringing that element to the offense will be something yeah. that, that I think we haven't seen before, but also the pistol formation with the running back directly behind Shadour is mm-hmm. going to scare some teams too. So well, um, I- and I, and I would love to see some formations where you've got maybe Dylan and Alton in the backfield together and, back. you, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, right before the snap, Dylan, you know, maybe splits out uh, or maybe they start from there. They both, they both stay yeah. in the backfield, start from there yeah. and Dylan just goes out for a pass, you know, something like that, or, you know, whatever it is. But I, I'd love to see stuff where those two guys or, you know, whether it's Dylan and Welch or Dylan and Savion, you know, whatever. I, yeah. I'd love to see more two back sets because I think that they've got, I think all four of those guys are very different from each other. And yeah. that's why I like to see two backs because you because there's two different threats every time you've got those yeah. those uh those guys back there. So that's what I'd love to see is you know, I think Dylan paired with any of those guys, he's so unique that uh, I think him paired with anybody, it just adds that different threat that you know yeah. that the defenses have to think. So I'm I'm curious to see what they do I with think, that. I think you hit it on the head though, with with the two back set and the tight end out there, and now the defense kind of comes out there, you know, seven in the box or something, and all yeah. of a sudden Dylan goes, well, you run, you run it a couple times, you get some yardage, and all of a sudden now Dylan goes out there, he's out in, in um, lining up in the slot, and now you have the running, the linebacker go out there trying to cover him. That's not going to work. Yeah, you know, one-on-one situation with Dylan. So, um, hey, matchup situations, you know, waiting to happen. We got so many running backs, I think we got to use them. You know, yeah. Uh, wide receiver is looking very deep. Um, Jimmy Horn Jr. and the Jante Wester on the field at the same time. I think it's going to be a problem for the defense. Um, yeah. Both of those guys are are kind of built in the same mold, super fast. Uh, Wester is just an exceptional route runner, over 100 catches last year. Um, then you have a guy like Shepard who's going to try to do what Xavier Weaver did last year and come in in May. Yep and establish himself as the number one guy after putting up successful seasons uh, statistically at Vanderbilt in the SEC. So he's played against some, some high competition. So who are you looking to play a lot at wide receiver? Shout out to Amarion Miller and Cordero Russell coming in yeah. and Terrell Timmons. You got some guys out there, man. Who you Who do you like? Yeah, and 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 we didn't even mention the best one on the team, which is Travis Hunter, right? <laughs> so you, you know, crazy, and, right? I mean, how how insane is that group that your best receiver is your cornerback? But um, you know, it, it, it's a crazy group, and you know, you know, you mentioned uh, Jimmy Horn and, and Lejante West on the field at the same time, and then you throw Dylan in the backfield. I mean, the speed is is insane, um, and Travis, I don't, Travis, I don't think has that same speed, but his athleticism makes it look the same, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, you know, so, uh, you know, Travis is in a whole other category. So you're asking about receivers and yeah. Travis is, is one of those, but he's that other category. So we're going to say Travis is, that's the guy, right? <laughs> that's the number one guy. But of those other guys, um, you know, to me, the, the step that Jimmy Horn has to take is um, he had some drop problems last year, as good as he was. And, um, you know, I, I think every receiving core kind of has 
you know, that drop guy, <laughs> you know, the guy that struggles with that a little bit. And, and Jimmy was sort of that last year. Um, he made a lot of big plays, but he would have some drops. And there was that, you know, there was, uh, you know, we remember from the documentary, you know, Prime was talking about there was a game that Jimmy was dropping the ball and he had to kind of get, you know, put his arm around him and say, you're fine. <laughs> you can make plays. And then he goes out there and catches a pass. I think it was the CSU game. Yeah, that was the pass. Big yeah. Time. And so he yeah. then catches the pass and ties the game. So, uh, but I think that's the next step for him. But to me, when I saw I saw Jimmy the other day, um, you know, chat with him again at Xavier's pro day, Jimmy looks bigger to me. Um, he looks a little bit more muscular. Uh, still has that speed. Um, but I look at him as all these guys coming in. You know, I know some people have looked at it and said, "Oh, they're going to surpass Jimmy." I think it's going to spark Jimmy to where Jimmy's yeah. going to be. I think he can have a Xavier Weaver type of year that, that like that Xavier had last year where, you know, he threatened a thousand yards. I think Jimmy can do that. I, I still think outside of Travis, Jimmy's your, your, your uh, next guy. Yeah, definitely. Jimmy Horn Jr. I think the only reason you see a lot of those drops is because for one, he gets targeted a lot, you know, yeah. so you're going to mm-hmm. have some drops, you know, and nobody's yeah. perfect, but you know, that's like saying shallow misses tackles. Well, he makes a lot of tackles too. You know, at the same time. So, yeah. um, I like to put it in this analogy. They still say Dikembe Mutombo was a great shot blocker, right? Yep. But he did get dunked on, right? You know, yeah. it happens. You're going to get dunked on if you're trying to block shots or you're trying yeah. to block. So, it, it happens. And so, um, you know, Jimmy's going to – or any wide receiver is going to have some drops. He had a, a little string where he dropped a, a few of them. And Prime, like you said, had to talk to him. But that happens with wide receivers sometimes. We just hope that, um, you know, it's more times than not um, that it doesn't happen. So Yeah, and, um, and I, don't, I didn't mean to, you know, portray like that he drops half his pass or anything like that. It was it was maybe six or seven drops throughout the year, but he also, I think he caught like 58 passes. So, you know, he's yeah, catching he more. Team too. Yeah, yeah, you know, so he's he's catching more, you know, way more than he's dropping. But, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that there's – you you'll have those guys. Like, I, I don't think Xavier had – that many, you know, um, or Travis mm-hmm. had that many. Um, and, you know, so it's not a ton of drops, but it's just every time uh, when they happen, they can be huge. And I think that that's one where yeah. Jimmy's got to maybe be a little more, um, I don't even want to use reliable because he's pretty reliable, but you know what I mean? That, you know, eliminate, if it was six or seven last year, make it two or three this year, you know, exactly. um, yes, and yes. that's where you go from 58 catches to close to 65. And so, right. You know, I see that, but the, the, this receiver core, you know, you mentioned all those guys, you know, <laughs> Will Shepard is, you know, that guy that could be Xavier as well, right? Yeah. Um, Omarion yeah. Miller's got the ability to be what Xavier did last year, what Jimmy did last year. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's such a nice problem to have um, if you're Pat Shermer and you're Shador Sanders, you're like, well, who do I throw to, um, you know? And I love Shador last year. He talked about um, all the different guys that he, that he has – to throw to and he goes i don't ever think about oh this is the the game i need to get it to jimmy or this is the game i need to get it to Armario. it's just that's what i'm given and and he he would tell his receivers you might not catch a pass today that's fine yeah next week you're going to catch eight <laughs> you know and hey, i think that's and what I, we're going to see i've been one of those receivers uh in those situations and i've been at a receiver and been like man why am i playing wide receiver i'm running more than i'm involved in the game you know i should have just yeah. been on defense you know yeah. but that that's like the nature of being a wide receiver you're going to be open sometimes you're going to think you're open more times than you are um mm-hmm. and most of the time the quarterback is throwing based off of the either the play call and then uh the coverage is going to dictate everything and you might not be in the game plan this week uh yeah. they might be taking away the seam routes which is what you're normally running so that got to look away from that so uh that's just the nature of being a wide receiver unfortunately but uh it's all about winning you know all wide receivers are Mm -hmm. fine if we can get the win if i have zero catches but we win okay i feel like i could have helped but at least we won you know now if i have zero catches and we lose it's gonna be a problem but uh (laughs) you know uh, well and 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 (laughs) And we're going to see those games where, you know, Omarion's going to have a huge game and then maybe he doesn't uh, do much for two weeks or, you know, Will Shepard's yeah. going to have a huge game and doesn't do anything for a couple of weeks. So, uh, but while they're not doing something, Travis is going to have a huge game. Jimmy's going to have huge yep. games. So, um, you know, I, I just think this receiving core is so deep that, um, you know, 
and Shador is going to find that mismatch. And and to your point, yeah. if they're taking away what Will does really well one one week, well now Jimmy's open, and so that's exactly. what's going to be fun to watch with that receiving core is you know um, that chess match of uh, what do Shermer and Shador figure out each week as as to who's going to have that big game. Yep. Uh, wild cards, real quick. Wild cards at the wide receiver would be Terrell Timmons. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, Terrell Timmons and um, one other guy. Uh, slipping my mind right now. Why is it slipping my mind? Terrell Timmons, and I'll take. Um, who else you got out there? I, I was going to go Cordell Russell, oh, the kid from TCU. Cord- Cord- I was just about mm-hmm. to say Baby To. Yeah. yeah, Baby To. Those would be my wild cards to come in and really make some noise. So, yeah, um, well, look out for those. That's what, that's the fun thing about this core too is that you know there's probably gonna you remember like Omarion had his one game last year right, Tarvaj yeah. Dawson had his one game like the Nebraska game yeah. you know he yeah. kind of exploded then that was the only thing he did, um, those guys are young I I could see where there's one game like week seven all of a sudden Cordell Russell has like ten catches for 140 wow. yards you're like well where where's that been and then he doesn't yeah. have uh, much the rest of the year or or you know Terrell Timmons the same type of deal so. But that's what's mm-hmm. the beauty of this, of this receiving core is that you're going to have those guys that can that can rise up on a particular day if there's injuries or just they get their opportunity. Yeah, shouts out to the tight ends. A lot of positions mm-hmm. we're going to go over uh, throughout the week. Uh, each and every time we do this, we link up. Um, we'll have some reactions coming for the fans after the practice. Uh, probably our 10, 15 minute video. We'll talk about that. Um, defensive line though. Um, I've been liking what I've been seeing on the well off and reach people yeah. and the pregame show videos. Um, loving Shadozi Wonko, um, and Quinn Barnes, Torian Carter, Amari McNeil, shout out to JJ Hawkins getting in there also, and Chaz Wallace. Those guys showing some improvements. I think it's directly correlated to the attitude of the defensive line coaches that they have out there. Warren Sapp and Big D Lewis, who also played in the league, um, and the other coaches that are contributing also on the yeah. outside rushes, Coach Dancy and such. Um, I think that whole defensive line just have a whole different attitude this year, and I think it's going to be the, the the main focus to be better than last year that's going to catapult the team mm-hmm. for the win because they're going to have to stop the run and keep uh, those running backs from getting long runs up against the linebackers, against the secondary, and, and so on. Defense line is going to be huge, and I, I like the big guys up the front in the middle. To really, really cause some havoc this year. Yeah, and and you mentioned the key word there is attitude, right? And you know, I think a guy like uh, Chidozi um, brings some of that. And you know, I had a chance to do, I did a, a Zoom interview with him. I love his personality. I mean, just and he's a guy that's played a lot of football, and he's coming in here yeah. knows it's his last go around. And uh, you know, it looked like at their uh, their practice on Saturday, he was a non participant. He wasn't in pads, but. Um, you know, he still had helmet and jersey on, so uh, I don't think it's anything serious. But he's a guy that is br- going to bring some attitude. And um, Amari had a good year last year. You know, he was kind of quietly had a good year. Uh, but I think some of these new guys are going to help a guy like Shane Cokes even, um, who was a yeah. little bit quiet last year. We heard a lot about him uh, leading up to the season. Then he didn't make a ton of plays during the season. But I think uh, Shane's going to look better. You know, just because there's so much more depth around him as well. So um, I like that group a lot better. I don't think it's going to be, um, you know, one of the top defensive lines in the Big 12, but I think it's going to be much better than last year. I mean, last year um, it was arguably one of the worst in the Pac-12. <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't think they're going to be that. I think that it's going to be a better group. And they don't need to be the best D line in the, in the Big 12. They just need to be a lot better than last year, and I think that they will be. A lot better than last year, yep. Um let me see here. Uh, before we move on too far, uh, oh, this is what was interesting to me was I was looking at Travis Hunter, who we talked about on offense. I was looking at him on defense, and a lot of shots they had him playing in the slot now. Um, yeah. A lot of times if he was off the field, you got a Marion Cooper. Uh, you have DJ McKinney, and you got Preston Hodge out there on the field. Um, and, and we're not even mentioning Kamarni McClain, who's not been dressed out uh, yeah. to play. So. That's five corners, you know, that I think are starter, starter quality uh, on this defense right now, and high high quality guys on this defense. Um, what do you think about seeing Travis in the slot now, and trusting DJ McKinney and Preston Harris to play outside? Yeah, that's interesting because you know Travis, I think, is your best corner, uh, but 
you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do there because um, I like mixing it up a little bit. Um, I still think we're going to wind up seeing Travis mostly on the outside, I would guess. But, um, you know, DJ McKinney is a really good player. You know, uh, watching him, he's making some plays um, in practice. And um, if, if like Cooper and McKinney are more comfortable on the outside, Travis, you can put anywhere. Right. And exactly. so, you know, that's where, where maybe you'll see that is that um, if, McKinney is pretty solid on on the outside, but not in 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 the slot. Well, then, okay, DJ, you be outside. Travis, we we know you can cover the slot, um, and so you know that makes you better as a defense. And um, you know, you talk about you know in basketball, those guys that can play you know one through five or guard one through five. Well, that's Travis, right? <laughs> you you yeah. can play him anywhere. If if you had to, you could play him at safety. You know, I don't think, I don't think they're going to do that. But um, you know, Travis is that guy. I think he could play any secondary spot. And uh, and you'd be better at that spot, and so uh, that's where oh, I like Travis there. A five tool guy in baseball, so to speak. You that's know? right. He can do everything. <laughs> Travis um, would probably say he's got six or seven tools. <laughs> six or seven tools in his belt. You know, <laughs> five is not enough. That's right. <laughs> um, and and then you, a lot in college football, you see the slot receiver kind of being the focal point too. You know, being yep. that number mm-hmm. one option. So if you put Travis there, and you say lock up on him. Now it's kind of taking away the option of some of these guys and making right. them throw to that second or third option that they might not want to go to in the first place. And now you got two corner guys out there like Hodge, Kamani McClain, Cooper, and McKinney who can probably make some plays, you know, with Travis taking away that slot guy. So I, I like it. I like to mix it up like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Herman Smith the third is back there doing some things. That safety wearing that number six, uh, looking good. I think he can – really break, be an impact player for the team, just off uh, uh, the type of player he is. I thought he would come over from Jackson State to Colorado, but he ended up going to Idaho State, uh, was a highly touted, touted player coming out of San Diego Lincoln High School. Um, I yeah. think he can add some depth or possibly even start on this defense with Trevor Woods moving down from safety to linebacker now. Uh, Cameron Stillman, Craig there. You got Carter Stockmire, I think, is going to be playing safety. Yeah. Um, Looking good at the safety position, also. Uh, Shiloh Sanders, <laughs> Shiloh Sanders, Sanders, obviously. Yeah. yeah, you know, and uh, it's hard to see anybody starting over over Cam and Shiloh right now. But you know, I, I like Herman there. Um, the guy that I whose game I love, uh, and I don't think they're going to be able to keep him off the field is Jaden Milliner Jones. Jaden Milliner Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, when he came in last year, it was like, ooh, okay. This freshman can play, you know, and you know yeah. he's uh, you know he's a Dallas area guy. Um, I think it's Dallas. I know he's from Texas, um, so I, I so apologize. Texas, but, baby. Yeah, um, if it's Houston, I yep. apologize. I can't remember exactly where he's from, but he's a Texas guy. Yeah, I think um, it's, I think it's Soto, Texas. Yeah, that's Soto. right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So I knew it was Dallas, but um, but yeah, he's a guy. You're not going to be able to keep him off the field, and I and I do think that um, you know Shiloh and Cam, if they're healthier, starting, uh, but Jaden to me. Um, is one of those young guys and you know this team this is a different topic a little bit but you know this team has received so much attention nationally uh, for the transfer portal right and all the transfers they brought in but that freshman class from 2023 you look at that you know dylan edwards (laughs) cormani mcclain jade miller jones omarion miller you know uh, how many guys are we talking about right now from that freshman class out of high school um for I mean, isn't the narrative that Dion can't, uh, you know, coach can't recruit out of high school? Look at that freshman class from last year, you know. And the yeah. knock on on uh, Coach Prime is that he can't uh, recruit out of high school. Well, that group's pretty good from last year. Exactly, and you include uh, Tajay McCoy also, yep. who's been making mm-hmm. some plays in spring. He's coming out of there, so yeah, man, they did a great job. And then the ones that they have coming in this year too, you know, are no slouch. Oh, yeah, Michael uh, uh, Brandon Davis Swain <laughs> on yep. the defensive line. Making mm-hmm. plays, so I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving the talent um, that they have accumulated and, and found, you know, with the recruiting coordinators, uh, Coach Devin Respris and uh, Coach Corey Phillips and staff. Shouts out to them doing a great job since they've been there and surrounding uh, Coach Prime with with good players and good player options. Uh, last but not least, the coaching staff he's put together has been one that he's looked at as being, you know, he wanted to bring that NFL environment 
I think he's done just that. Big Phil Lowe hold on the offensive line, veteran. Yep. Defensive line, Coach Sapp, veteran. Deion Lewis, veteran. Adelius Thomas, I don't know his uh, official role, but he's around the team, veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, who else am I missing? Might be uh, Jason Phillips. Uh, Jason Thomas Phillips, Drake, yep. Veteran. So, you know, just great guys he's surrounded himself with on the staff that's bringing that NFL highly competitive attitude and atmosphere at practice. Yeah, you know, it, it's a staff that is loaded with with NFL guys. And then you, you add in uh, just a, an addition from last week, George Hageman, um, who played offensive George line Hageman. in the NFL. You know, that, how, did uh, I forget, how did I forget <laughs> Big George? That's right. Who, who is a very large man. I'm a big guy, and I love George Hageman because he made me look small. Uh, you know, yeah. he, he's, he's a big guy. So, um, and, and I do want, you mentioned one guy real quick I want to mention, uh, Tajay McCoy um, at Xavier's Pro Day the other day. Um, you know, we don't get to watch practice, but we got to watch pro day, um, standing there chatting with, uh, with a veteran, um, edge player. I won't say who it was. Um, but, um, he was telling me, he said, Tajay McCoy, he goes, that's a player. And this is a guy that wants to start here. He's like, it's, we're not going to be able to get him off the field. You know, he was saying Tajay McCoy is really good and having a great spring. So, um, you know, watch for that guy as well. Yeah. Even coach Dink Williams last year. You know, you could see some mm-hmm. of the comments he was making during the practices. You could tell that he he was like, "I see something in this kid right here," yep. and uh, mm-hmm. Tajay McCoy. So I'm loving it, and I'm excited to see what he's going to bring. Uh, but yeah, all in all, man, on this Buff Time conversation, Buff Time podcast, Brian Howard, Big Dog Chico, we will be talking about everything, all everything, and all things Buff. Um, we got special things to talk about, uh, maybe. Tomorrow or whenever else we get back on here. But yeah. um, a lot of players that talk about a lot of news and uh, more things and everything, Coach Prime, keep coming. So let them know where they can find you at, Brian, and uh, any last closing words. Yeah, and I, we, we also got offensive line to talk about at some point, too. Go you know, that, that big group. Yeah, but uh, you know, buffzone.com is where my uh, my coverage is, and you know, Twitter at Brian Howell33. Buffzone.com, baby. Y'all log in right now. Uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel also that's constantly growing. Uh, log on to mine also. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And uh, more Buff Time podcast coming. Hopefully we can get it on uh, Spotify and Apple and all this other stuff. We are to continue to hear our voices, all right, and giving our knowledge from Coach Prime side to the Buff side, and we combining them, bringing them together, baby. All right? It's all about the whole Buff business up in here.